Egypt has slipped back into a political crisis this week when the country's military overthrew its democratically elected president. Mass celebrations after Mohamed Morsi's ousting quickly turned into violent clashes between his supporters and opponents. A new interim government is slowly being formed, but people there are deeply uneasy about what's to come, as RT's Paula Sleer reports. Egypt's back in the headlines, but for all the wrong reasons. A week of street battles, mass crowds, a divided country on the brink of civil war. This is the street where the worst violence in Cairo happened. More than 35 people killed, more than 1,000 injured. The mood is extremely tense. Friends, family and supporters shouting, crying, a lot of emotion. And the country's bracing itself for more. U.S.-issued military combat boots stand guard. The newly installed armies not taking any chances. If uh, no clear government action to change this way, the status quo, then Egypt is on the brink of disaster. The is running out for Egypt to enact, uh, to enact a real policy and enact real changes. On the one side, the millions who rallied for the ouster of the Muslim Brotherhood's president, Mohamed Morsi. They got what they wanted when on Wednesday the army took over. Across the bridge, those who want him reinstated. Both sides are talking war. I want to say to the American states and to the world, to the whole world, to the West, to Europe, be careful. If you join the army, the Egyptian army, or the head of the Egyptian army to destroy the Islamists, that means that you're turning this country to a place that will produce a lot of Islamists. There's a strong feeling of deja vu. After just a year in office, the Muslim Brotherhood leaders have joined their predecessor, imprisoned President Hosni Mubarak. Both now sit in the same jail. America is betting on a losing horse by selling out to the Islamists. Where is the America that calls for freedom? Why have they allowed this to happen? Does freedom mean shutting down Islamic TV channels? Does it mean shutting down newspapers? Mina Maher watches events unfold from his balcony. This Copt Christian lives in an apartment overlooking Tahrir Square. He says it's now Egyptian pitted against Egyptian. This is something that completes the first revolution. Uh, the first revolution was incomplete by having uh, the military taking uh, control of the country for more than a year and then um, using the democracy in a very um, bad way by giving the, uh, the, the, the country to the Muslim Brotherhood, which are the worst people to control the country. This is Ahmed Sadiq, and I would like you to join me on a journey through time. Travel back in time, travel to unravel discoveries, discover revolutions that made Egypt, and the element that made Egypt revolutionable. Ahmed Sadiq is one of the few taking advantage of the constant turmoil. He offers foreign tourists a VIP revolutionary tour. It includes a quick look at Tahrir, although mostly through the car's window. Now I'm, I'm so well spoken thanks to the revolution. I used to stammer and stutter and flounder. Now you see, I've, my speech flows like a mighty stream. I'm almost like British people. But most tourists are staying away. While the country plummets, unemployment's up, and the Egyptian pound is fast losing its already weakened value. As supporters on both sides brace for more confrontations, many fear the situation will only go from bad to worse. Paulus Lea RT, Cairo.